go through, we know each other here, so we know who we are. I am going to, right here, I am going to go to questions, because I am going to write some questions down, because I don't have any pets. I've done a lot of studying on it, but we don't have dogs, or cats, or horses, and that's what this is on tonight. And so I am going to write the questions down to make sure that I get I cover all of them. And if I don't cover them, you'll get the answer for you. Um, so, questions tonight. What do some of your dogs suffer with? Ear infections. Ears, yes. I'm just going to put ears because I know um, all about and that. Scrapes. Okay. Oh, I suppose they're dandruff even, right? He is having mm -hmm. a terrible time yeah, on his tummy. Is that a dog yeah. or cash? Um, yeah. 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 Dog. At the feed mm -hmm. store. Yeah. Yeah, so the dry dry skin and itching. Because mm -hmm. one knows it just itches crazy. Okay. And Maisie's nose is real dry. And I suspect it's because I was refusing breed. But I, that was one of my questions, is should they not be doing breathe in their answer? Because I stopped doing it, and so I, I don't know what... Get, did it get better? It's starting to. Is it starting to get better? There are certain oils that... So I wonder, mm -hmm. um, maybe there's we'll something... Talk about that. Breathe okay. that might... See, and I was refusing to breathe. Lightning, anxiety, uh, anxiety. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thunderstorms, stuff like that. Driven from the feed store, so those are just um, yeah. what people are asking yep. about that way. So yeah, ticks, fleas, and insect mm -hmm. repellents, things like mm -hmm. that. For mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, how about can they ingest them? Mm -hmm. just like on their food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can they? Yeah. Just put a drop in their food. male problems, like broken males. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that dog seems to break some mail from my own. Yeah. And then he licks it forever. Excessive yeah. licking? Yeah. 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 On their paws. Yeah. 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 That is usually a sign of, from what I've read, is a nervousness uh -huh. yeah. and anxiety. Yeah. What about, well, I know we have ticks and fleas, but um, what about worms? Because if uh, Cash, I saw him the other day eat something he shouldn't have over at the rodeo. What like, heartworms? Yeah. Heartworms we don't have up here. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Not, not cold. heartworms, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, if your dog's out in the woods and he gets elk phone, he's li liable or can get worms. From mm -hmm. chewing on them. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes they tend to eat things they shouldn't, mm -hmm. like lots of dead things. Dead things and manure. Nasty. I'm like, cash. Yes. Yes. Why did you just eat that horse? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, at the rodeo. So what can we do for that? Because I'm pretty sure he ingested somebody. Because um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that right there. Yeah. Justin. Okay. And um, how about it when they have an upset tummy? I have a Westie, and she, if 
by debris, they tend to build up bile in their stomach. So, those are all real good questions, I think. I think I hit on all of them, almost all of them. This one I might have to look at. Um, but I'm pretty sure. All right, so some of these we can just go through because we, they're the same slides and we just use them because we don't know if there's going to be somebody new here. So we can pop through these quickly. What is an essential oil? You guys all know what essential oils are. Um, aromatic non-solid liquids, steam distilled or cold pressed. Essential oils for pets. Dogs, we're going to start with a few points to being that cats and dogs um, have a much better sense of smell. Dogs, 200 times the sense of smell than humans have. And so, um, the way that you want to introduce oils to a dog, and then cats for that matter, um, is slowly, very slowly, um, you can open the bottle. Sometimes if for smaller dogs, even, you can leave the bottle closed and bring the bottle to the dog. And if the dog, you know, starts to lick at the bottle, you know that the dog probably likes the smell of that. And that's something that um, you can probably go ahead and use. If the dog turns away, doesn't want anything to do with it, um, don't use the oil. Because uh, the, the dog, a cat, um, or even horses, because um, we'll get into, nobody has horses here, but we thought maybe we might have some <coughs> people with horses here, so I do have a couple slides on horses. Um, but <clears throat> introducing slowly the bottle, opened or non-opened, doesn't know, I mean, smaller dogs you can keep it closed and they probably will be able to tell, you can still smell it. Um, bigger dogs, you can open it up and let them smell it. If they start to lick and go towards it, you can use it. If they back off and don't want anything to do or sneeze and kind of back off from it, stay away from that oil. It's not necessary to use it. Probably in something else that the dog will like. Um, cats and dogs are smaller than humans. That means the dosage is going to go way down. For the most part. Um, like for, <clears throat> you can use almost the same dose as you would use, use for children. So 25% of an adult dose so, uh, for instance, one drop of frankincense used four drops of um, fractionated coconut oil along with that if you're going to put it on a dog. Um, or if you're going to use, um, like, frankincense for internal use, because we talked about really good dog. It's good for the dogs to take that in, and you can use solid coconut oil, extra virgin of coconut oil, take a little bit, put a drop on there, and then put it in their food. That's a good way. One, the coconut oil. They should love the coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Most dogs love coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Do we have cats too here? <clears throat> no cats? No cats. cats. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good because then we don't have to go through <clears throat> a slide on what you don't want to feed cats. But, um, so dogs, coconut oil, but make sure that it's diluted. Put it right in their food. Or you can put um, some of the things, and we'll get into that, like peppermint in their water. Just mm -hmm. a drop in their water. Um, sometimes for stomach issues, things like that. Um, <clears throat> they metabolize oils differently than humans do. And so some oils, and we'll talk a little bit about them, some of the hot oils like oregano, cinnamon, um, clove, things like that, you may want to stay away from with, with dogs. They are called polyphenol. Um, they have phenols in, in them. And dogs and cats metabolize those differently than humans do, and it can cause liver problems in them. Usually in very large doses, but even so, you can probably just stay away from them because you can find an alternative oil that doesn't have those phenols in them that will suffice and do the same thing. So, um, just something to think about. Um, and some cats and dogs deal with some of the same issues that humans do, like anxiety, those are some of the things. And, 
And so you can almost, some of the oils that you would think of for, humans don't overthink it, you would use for humans like lavender to calm down. Lavender is going to work the same way on a dog um, as it would, and a cat as it would on a human, for the most part. There are certain um, oils that work better on dogs and cats, and we'll get, kind of get into that. Uh, we did... Um, we did talk a little bit about that, but introduce them slowly, very, very slowly to them, the animals. Don't force them. Um, dilute, 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 especially with cats, and we don't have any cats in the room, but smaller dogs, too. Um, make sure they're, they're, they are diluted um, well. Uh, and then be observant. Just watch the animals. You, I mean, you're kind of giving them medication, in a way, mm -hmm. and so keep an eye on that. Just like humans can have an adverse reaction to something, uh, whether it be, for many people have adverse reactions to patchouli. You can get, some people with asthma don't do well with patchouli um, oil. It's a great oil, and lots of people have seen lots of benefits from it, but some people who are asthmatic have issues with it. Same with dogs and animals, is that you might find an oil that they have an adverse reaction to, uh, or they just don't like, and they don't want to be in the room. If you find that, stop using that on the, on the dog. Um, most dogs, in when you're um, when you're um, diffusing, it should be so um, diluted that it shouldn't affect the nose. Mm -hmm. But I will look and we'll look at the. Um, you said it's breathe that was the breathe. problem. Yeah. yeah, it might be the eucalyptus in the uh, in there. Okay. Um, that's a possibility. Um, that it might be the eucalyptus that might be causing the, the, the dryness or the problem. Um, but, um, yeah, for sure, pull it off. If it gets better, then you know that that's the, that's the issue. That's the ingredients that's causing the problem. That's why we're really going through these facts. Um, real fast tonight. Um, okay, so for dogs, these are, these are good for dogs. Um, um, and cats, for the most part, I kept it pretty much the same. So these are the best oils um, for some of the issues. So lavender being the universal oil for almost all animals, dogs and cats, used um, more frequently in vet clinics than any other oil, for sure. So any holistic vet clinic, and mo even most non-holistic vet clinics, use lavender in their clinic for anxiety issues. Um, allergies for dogs and cats during that time of the year. Um, minor burns, ulcers, uh, scrapes, anything like that, um, that is going to be your go-to for um, dogs. Insomnia, so if they struggle with car ride anxiety, so if they're really wild in cars, that's one that you're going to want to use. Um, you can name a few. Now, how do you put it on the dog? Um, so the best way um, that, I, that I did quite a bit of research on applying, so four to one usually, coconut oil or any vegetable-based oil. So you could use a grapeseed oil or you can use a Jehovah oil or whatever it might be. So four drops to one. Um, back of the spine and go from the rump to the neck, okay? Backwards. So I'm going to take it in your hand and against the grain, against the, um, and just rub it all the way up. Do they have to get next to their skin? No. Okay. Nope. Good. Cash has a lot of hair. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll be in there. <laughs> no. Okay. No, you don't okay. have to get next to the skin. Okay. The sand back with just a tad pad. You don't have to get next to the skin. It will absorb into the skin. Uh, but a good five to ten minutes. I mean, even though the vet that I was listening to, um, I listened to two or three different vets that utilize essential oils in their practice um, in Los Angeles, the largest vet clinic in Los Angeles, and they usually spend or tell the owners to spend 30 to 40 minutes rubbing it in. And, just, and sometimes you can do that while you're watching a show or something like that if there's an anxiety you know, up the back, and you'll see a difference within that 30 minutes of them calming way down. Um, so lavender is good, and you can do um, 
<clears throat> lavender, if they have um, arthritis, if it's an older dog, mm -hmm. you want to do lavender, um, frankincense, and then wintergreen or spearmint. Mm -hmm. um, those three in, the, in a row. So lavender is going to calm the dog down so that the dog um, is in a good state while you're doing this. Uh, then you want to move to frankincense. Frankincense is going to take care of the inflammation. It, it works wonders on, on, on inflammation in humans as well as in dogs for arthritis. And then the wintergreen um, is going to soothe the dog down. So act just like an icy hot for a dog, really. So it's going to uh, act as an analgesic. Um, so in that order, uh, the best way to use that. Um, so, uh, cardamom uh, is a diuretic, okay, and so and an antibacterial. So it'll normalize the appetite in a dog that is not having uh, is having appetite problems, or too much eating too much. You know, I and mean, I mean, a lot of dogs have that issue where weight gain becomes an issue. Um, so it normalizes the app. Um, the appetite takes care of heartburn and nausea in dogs. So we talked about um, excessive uh, or upset tummies in dogs. So uh, cardamom is a, is a good oil for that. Again, use regular coconut oil, um, not the fractionated. Put it in there, put a couple drops on there, and put it in their food. And they can ingest that, and it'll, it should help with that, um, the appetite and also the nausea. Um, fennel, good for adrenal, um, the adrenal cortex, flushes out toxins, um, and good for uh, thyroid and pineal glands in, in dogs. Helichrysum, almost the same thing it does for humans as it does for cats and dogs. Uh, great antibacterial, if the dog gets a scrape and is bleeding, helichrysum is going to be great. It acts as a coagulant, and so it'll clot that blood very quickly, um, just like it does in um, great for skin regeneration, helps nerve problems. So dogs sometimes have nerve problems with the back, the hind legs a lot of times as they get older. And so <clears throat> it's really helpful for that, as well as cardiac disease. Um, and frankincense, you know, hard to, I mean, it works in so many different ways. Uh, frankincense is used, is the second most used um, essential oil uh, in vet clinics. Um, used in most standard practices as well as holistic practices for tumor reduction. Um, so they use it's much more um, widely used in vet care and has been for more years than than in regular medical practices. But uh, so yeah, great for cancer, great for arthritis, dogs with arthritis. Yes, that is one that you can put in their dog food every day, and then if you yep. just put a drop. Like, yep. mm -hmm. on their dog food, they'll just yep. eat it with their dog food. Yep, they can eat it with their dog yep. food. That works. Um, I, again, they kept, they kept putting in their use it, um, regular coconut oil. Coconut oil, is, it's great for their skin from the inside mm -hmm. out, and it's great for, it, for their coat. So yeah. do, you, do you put it in both meals, morning and night, or just one meal? Yeah, there's no reason you couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no reason you couldn't. Um, and they should love it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, great for their coat too. It'll shine their coat up, and um, and then they get the frankincense. Easy way to get their frankincense in. If the dogs don't like the taste of frankincense, they'll eat up that coconut oil. Um, spearmint oil, um, great for um, weight reduction. Again, it's just like cardamom. Um, diarrhea. So you know, if your dog ate something that it shouldn't have eaten. Uh, nausea, um, balance the metabolism out, stimulates the gallbladder. Um, this one you don't want to use for very long, and it can be used in cats, but um, in a very, very diluted way. But no one has cats here, so it doesn't even matter. I'm trying to modify my presentation on the fly, because no one has cats. So why, um, why use short term? Because uh, spearmint oil has a little bit of um, phenol in it. It's a very minor ingredient. Okay. And so um, using it for the long term, they don't want that lim 
it could affect the liver, okay. um, but in the short term, it's not going to cause any problems. And that's why I say really dilute for cats. Um, some of the things that we can get to that aren't covered here, which I think we covered a lot of them, um, would be the ticks, fleas, worms, things of that nature. Cedar wood is going to be fantastic for that. So cedar wood um, diluted on the coat um, is going to work really well for fleas and ticks and things of that nature. Um, again, you want to stay away from some of the hot oils. Not a huge deal with dogs as it is with cats, but um, like that would be a lot of times in repellent that we use for humans, you would have cinnamon and you would have some of the citrus, like citronella or you would have citrus oils. Uh, cats don't do well with any of those. They're high phenol content. Um, dogs, probably not a big deal, but cedar wood is a great alternative for, for any of those. Um, and you can use that right on the animal. Um, trying to think what other um, things they have. Excessive licking, um, we talked a little bit about that. Again, the go-to would be lavender on that. Um, and myrrh. Myrrh is good for that as well. Um, we didn't talk too much about myrrh here, but um, myrrh is going to be good for, for that um, excessive licking and focus for the dog or, or myrrh. Yep. Uh, frankincense also will work good with anxiety issues, so if you wanted to mix frankincense and lavender together, um, that would work. So would you suggest, Mike, that like I could make a salve out of that and then um, to rub? Mm -hmm. Like Cash, is, it's under his tummy right here. He's just like... Rawr, rawr. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like, I don't know, three tablespoons and then when you say drops, not very much. Like a couple mm -hmm. drops of each in right. the oil. Up, yep. Or in the coconut oil. Yeah, okay. in the coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, skin issues for them, again, it's the lavender. You can use melaleuca with dogs, a very small amount of melaleuca, especially in the ear area, around the ear, not in the ear canal, just like humans, but around the ear where they're having the problems. Diluted with a fractionated coconut oil or a, a vegetable-based oil of some kind. Um, use a Q-tip, just use mm -hmm. a Q-tip tip and clean it out and then put the, that type of salve on um, that you would want right on the outside of the ear, or where the, where the dryness is, probably. Um, dry nose, that's the one thing that... Um, I'll have to research on the dry nose thing. I don't really know what is a good way to do it, because you don't want to get too close to inside the nose. The nose is a very sensitive area for a dog. So, uh, let me do some a little bit of research on that. Karen's looking something up right now. Maybe there's something in there. I didn't see anything in there on that, but it doesn't mean that I, I didn't miss it. Um, uh, we talked about rollerballs. Yes, you can use rollerballs. Um, in fact, you know what I would do with a rollerball? If you want to pre-make the, the rollerballs, then put it in your hand. And then rub the, the dog the opposite direction. Otherwise, the rollerball is going to get all hair all yeah. Furry. Yeah. Clogged but, up. Yeah, clogged <laughs> up. So rub it on your hands and then rub um, the opposite direction. And then after you're done, the hair in the back. You know, you put it back to the normal condition. And that fractionated coconut oil and the oils are really going to help with the coat. You know. Um, some of the oils that you may want to stay away from, uh, these are mainly for cats, um, but can be... And I'll, I'll, if it's just simply for cats, I'll, I'll state that. So cinnamon, you probably want to stay away from, with both, okay? Uh, all the fur oils, so Douglas fur and white fur, and then those are the two furs that doTERRA offers, uh, high in phenol content, so you can probably just stay away from them, no need to have them. Uh, cypress, juniper, spruce, tea tree, which is melaleuca, we talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Okay for dogs. Um, you have to almost feed them three big bottles of melaleuca because it becomes toxic to the dog itself. So it's really not a huge de deal if you have one drop. Um, uh, birch, clove, clove being another um, hot oil. Uh, thyme, oregano, same thing, pine. Pettigrain, um, you could use for dogs. Um, actually, it's 
good for dogs from a hypertension standpoint um, and hyperactivity standpoint. Uh, not good for cats, too high of a phenol content. And um, another um, uh, chemical constituent would be called ketones. Not good for cats, fine for dogs. They metabolize them fine. Um, I can't see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lime, any of the citrus oils for cats, stay away from them. Uh, wild orange, not, not a big deal for dogs. You can use them if they like the smell of them. You can diffuse them all day. Um, the only ones I guess I would stay away from they don't have on here, uh, wintering and, and then eucalyptus. And it could be either one of those in that breed that is causing the issue. Um, tansy, which includes blue tansy. Um, and I think that's the only tansy that we actually carry would be blue tansy. Cassia is the same as cinnamon. It comes from the same species, so you want to stay away from that. Um, Wintergreen can be used on dogs. Peppermint can be used on dogs. And tangerine can be used on dogs. Um, just not on cats. Uh, Wintergreen, again, peppermint, great for, um, one, good for their breath. If you want to put it in there, uh, a drop in their water. They might like it. They might not. Who knows? Um, or put in a little bit on coconut oil. Uh, Wintergreen, again, great for arthritis in dogs and, and when they get older. Um, it's going to be um, good pain relief for them. Um, so those are, those are kind of the ones that you want to stay away from. I guess the highlight would be, um, and you can diffuse these. You should be able to diffuse them in the house with a dog and not be a problem. Like if you see that being a problem, then discontinue it. Um, but any of these should be able to be diffused. If the dog doesn't like it, though, it'll go away uh, and won't be in the room. Uh, but it's so, it's so diluted that it shouldn't be an, an issue. Um, that's why I'm happy. Might be. It could be that it could be the eucalyptus in there. I don't know. Um, but again, stay away from clove, thyme, oregano, all of those with, with dogs. Just, they don't do any good. Our next section on horses, which nobody has horses here, so we don't really have to go into it, otherwise, I mean, I'll go ahead through it, um, the slide. Uh, some of it's kind of interesting, but yeah, that's not it. Horses don't have any problems with any oils at all, and metabolism is much like a human's metabolism, um, and so they metabolize all the oils pretty much exactly the same as we do. Some of these actually probably would work, some of these recipes would work on dogs in a very diluted way. Um, so um, take out the oregano in here, abscesses, things like that. This actually wouldn't be a bad one at all um, for dogs. A little bit of tea tree, um, on guard, lavender, um, and Epsom salt and water, and they stand in it um, if they have problems with their paws. That's a really good way for them to um, absorb it into their system. Best way, I mean, their paws are super absorbent, their paws um, are really sensitive, so any issues that they have with them, that's a great way uh, to deal with it. Dry paws, anything like that. Epsom salts, those, um, then those oils. Um, uh, I don't have to worry about rain rot. Eucalyptus, muscle spasms. Actually, this one's a good one. All of those are safe um, for muscle issues. Basil, lavender, marjoram. Um, I think you wanted to talk about that last one. <laughs> oh, I had someone who asked about that. She's cleaning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, she's. It, this was at the vet, uh -huh. or she's having a terrible time. Well, that is a, I went to, man, probably three different um, large animal vets who mm -hmm. use um, online. They had different recipes, yeah. and this one came up like three or four times uh -huh. with several different types of oils. I mean, mm -hmm. some use Young Living Oil, some use others, but this yeah. was always the, the blend that came up, which was uh -huh. On Guard Myrrh and Rosemary. Yeah. Used with like a KY jelly um, um, or a mild cleanser, which would be like a cast out soap mm -hmm. or something like that, um, mixed in a half gallon of water. Yeah. And so 
that one I would take, and that would be the suggestion there, and everyone said that works <coughs> better than in some of the cleaners that they have, which can be very, in my, what I hear, I don't know, I've never seen yeah. a dry sheath, but yeah. that's our dry horse sheath, but that's, they say, is that they dry them out and dries out. Mm -hmm. can't be very comfortable for the male horse. <laughs> So I would have spent quite a bit more time on that if we had some other horses or a ranch and we just thought we might tonight. And so we threw that in there. So we are, I mean, that's, that's really the end of the, uh, of the class tonight. So kind of a quick class. But I hope it was um, informative yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with regards to us. Any questions? Um, yeah, so... I don't remember if I missed anything. No, I think you got everything. Okay. So is we either put it on their back Mm -hmm. Or we could do a little Epsom salt bath, bath mm -hmm. and put the feet in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. You can put it on their paws too. Yeah, yeah, you can. You Through can, a roller ball? You yeah, can you can do, that. do a roller ball. As long okay. as it's diluted, um, okay. yeah, I do a four to one dilution four to with, one. With, with dogs. Um, and yeah, you can put it right on their paws. So pretty much Maybe. all of the oils that we can use on them are okay if they do lick. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I only really went into the the oils that they, you know, that are safe for them, and as humans we can ingest. Okay. You know, okay. other than the wintergreen, which it's at such a small content that it's not going to be a problem, and it absorbs in quickly, and you're just going to want to put that on their hind, wherever their legs are, where they're having pain, you know, mm -hmm. joints, things of that. Sure. And they might look at they're just going to get a little bit of wintergreen taste in their mouth, and it's not going to be a big deal. But yeah, all, all fine for them to. Now, if they don't lick the lavender or like like the lavender mm -hmm. just by putting their nose up, right? Yeah. If they keep smelling it, that means they like it. Yeah. But if they need it, you can still use it on them. You can. You just have to keep introducing it to them, and very slowly, okay. mm -hmm. um, because. Um, dogs, like I said, 200 times more sensitive uh, mm -hmm. from a, okay. um, s a sense of smell standpoint. And so it could be a real, it could up their anxiety if they don't like it. Mm -hmm. So try right. something else okay. that they will like. Which another one for anxiety that's good is serenity. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah, a lot of that. that. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yep. Serenity yeah. would be great for um, everything in there. It would be great mm -hmm. for anxiety. It, if the, there is lavender in it, so you can smell the lavender a little bit, but um, if there are other oils in that, so if the dog likes serenity over straight lavender, use serenity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can go ahead and...